Chat Arms TV, man, we're back again, and this is the third interview with the homie, the Fan Bam Bigelow. Fan Bam Bigelow. Lil White, man, we're back again. We Last time we did one was uh, July of 22, I think, and um, yeah, this, this is being filmed mid-August of 23, yeah. um, so a lot's happened in this past year. We got yeah, shout out Justin Ty, shout out Saino, they're in here too. We're finished. Bye, bye. Trying to walk by all quiet. And yeah. shit, like. This is actually, they're, they're putting the final touches. Final touches on the album, yeah. Don't, don't listen to what Justin Ty says. This is the final touches. <laughs> so, why, let's just try to, let's, there's been a lot that's happened in this last year. Oh, yeah. Good, bad, you know what I'm saying? But let's just, we'll just kind of, where we left off last year um, was around the time. Um, it was, actually, the day that I came up and interviewed you was the day after BPZ passed away. Yep. And we did it at uh, Sidecar yeah. at the bar. Shout out to them. Um, Shout out to Sidecar Cafe. But a lot's happened in the last year. So let's we can just kind of go through, man. Like, you want to kind of just talk about, there's been a lot that's been going on with you. Um, do you want to speak on that first? It doesn't matter, brother. This is this, okay. this your show. So... You're recently uh, sober. You said uh, currently when we're at 57 days. You're currently, uh, when we're filming this, you're out how many days? 57 today. 57, 57 days. Yeah, yeah, 57. Do you want to kind of talk about what happened with all that? Uh, as sure. Much as, as much as, no, as, I mean, much as you want to, to or sure, can. Sure, sure. Yeah. Um, so uh, I hit my neighbor's, neighbor's mailbox. Uh, allegedly, the mm-hmm. officer said I was a little too intoxicated. But I, I really wasn't. I, I didn't get, I didn't get too intoxicated until it took him an hour to get there, and I drank. Uh, so I got a DUI or whatever. I'm fighting. Um, uh, violated my uh, ankle monitor on my leg because I had a few nights. Uh, people died and shit. And, you know, I just didn't give a fuck about no jail time or nothing like that. Yeah. Um, close people. You know what I mean? Like. People started dying like fast, fast too. Like damn, so and so, 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 and then like it hit real close to home. Well, BPs hit very close to home, mm-hmm. and then you know January first of this year, mm-hmm. Gangsta Boo was taken from us, and that yeah. that that messed me up. That was something yeah. fucking us. too drunk. I didn't care. Yeah, but uh, so I ended up uh, the judge. Uh, by the way, Judge, if you happen to see this, thank you. Um, she revoked my bond, <laughs> made me do like 10 days in jail, which turned into like two weeks. Mm-hmm. Um, they realized that they didn't sign off on my ankle monitor. Oh, okay. So I was in jail for like five days longer than I should have been. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, I got right out or whatever, but uh, I was supposed to go... I got two days out and go to rehab. So I ended up going to Cumberland Heights in Nashville. Um, mm-hmm. I can't speak highly enough of them folks. They're all, the staff is incredible. Yeah. Uh, everybody there is cool as fuck, man. Like, uh, but it was something that I've been putting off for a long time, dude. Alcohol had a grip on me. Mm-hmm. I mean, a major grip on me. Like, I, I wasn't one of those, um, you know, wake up in the morning and, you know, drink before I eat or anything. Yeah, I, I was an afternoon drinker that turned into a nighttime, like, y'all know who I am. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Y'all know who I am. Um, so, yeah, I made 20 years of partying, dude. It was like once I got in there, I was like, you know what? I don't need this alcohol shit no more, man. It's just, it's just slowly killing me, mm-hmm. you know. You know, it's a little herb smoke. That shit will never kill you. Yeah. But alcohol killed a lot of, it killed some people close to me, man. Like I lost Wes Phillips, you know, which was my right hand man, yeah. business partner, um, to just alcoholism. Um, it was weird, man. It was just like, it was one of the places where I just, I, I, I felt at home. Almost like I, I, I cracked a joke and I said, uh, y'all should have known I was going to be here someday. <laughs> yeah. Like, what? Yeah. Oh, I can't believe Blue White's in rehab. Really? You can't? Gee, what? Okay. Yeah. But no, um, no, it helped out more than anything, bro. Like, it really did. I don't know why my damn voice is so been uh, hoarse today. I ain't even rapping or nothing. Um, 
But yeah, um, it changed me for the better, dog. It uh, made me realize a lot of things that I was holding bottled in and just, um, yeah. uh, letting that be the overall cause of wanting to get drunk, you know, not even thinking about it, like not realizing it, like, and I mean, like, I can let one thing piss me off that, like, triggers these things from a long time ago, that, and, and I didn't believe in that shit for a long time, man. Yeah. You couldn't get me to listen to no motherfucking therapist. I'm a little white. I'm, I'm my own therapist. Shit. That woman taught me there is, I mean, she wasn't like rude about it either. She she just showed me where I had my uh, my character defects or what they call it. Yeah. Like things about you you don't know about you that, that cause you to be the way you are. Yeah. And, and uh, you know, a professional can look in from the side and see it. You know, a professional can yeah. look, look from the outside looking in and go, I can tell you what's wrong with you right now. Yeah. And uh, um, super shout out to uh, Miss Stacy Brzezinka. Mm-hmm. Man, super shout out. I love you so much. You, that woman, she's an amazing counselor and therapist, man. She, uh, she, she pinpointed my problem areas and, you know, it wasn't like I had to get sent to uh, rehab because me and my wife fight all the time and yeah. she sent me to yeah. rehab to save our marriage or nothing like that. We're, right. fi- we're doing fine. Yeah. We're doing more than fine. We're doing fantastic. Um, it wasn't one of those, uh, I worked for a nice company and insurance put me through it. Yeah. You know, it was one of these situations where the judge just told me, like, look, dude, you need to slow the fuck down. Yeah. You need to slow the fuck down. And, um, you know, walking out, you know, when I walked out of the court uh, jail to know I got two days out to go rehab, I, I couldn't have been happier to go to rehab because 201 Poplar in Memphis, Tennessee jail is something you do not want to go to ever. Right. Yeah. Um, but um, after about that third or fourth day, I started getting it. You know, and I, you know, I pick on very, I pick up very fast. I'm a smart learner. I mean, a fast learner. Um, <coughs> so like, it was just go to your look, man. Fire ass breakfast every morning. Mm-hmm. Breakfast buffet. Some shit just like shit. on like. A four-star Hyatt down in Miami or some shit's breakfast yeah. buffet. Ba- grits, sausage, bacon, turkey sausage. Uh, no bacon. No bacon. Fuck. Uh, just all kinds of eggs and just, just a fire-ass breakfast every morning. Yeah. So shit. Then a fire-ass lunch. Then a fire-ass dinner. All you got to do is sit through some classes, listen to what these folks are trying to tell you about yourself. Mm-hmm. Whether you want to fucking hear it or not. Yeah. And the good counselors are the ones that will literally just beat it into your fucking head. Like, I don't give a fuck if you get mad at me for saying this to you. Mm-hmm. Th- these are your problem areas. Yeah. And it takes an open mind to go in there and, you know, um, not just learn, but want to want to change and want to learn. Yeah. Um, and I took it 100%, man. And I, I, I haven't felt like this in years, dude. Like, I literally, me and the wife just... Me and Nicole just went up. I had a show in Virginia this past weekend. Yeah. I woke up the next morning, and, like, for some reason, my body just felt like it wanted to barf in the hotel toilet because it's been used to waking up after shows and barfing in the hotel toilet. Like, as soon as you wake Yeah, like, I don't know if it was, like, a muscle memory or something. I go to the bathroom, and I'm like, wait a minute. I didn't, I didn't even I didn't drink last night. It was, yeah. You know, it was, it was cool, though. It was, um, it was one of those eye-opening experiences, like, where it's just like, man, I partied, I partied hard enough for about, I partied hard enough for every uh, 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 view we get on this. <laughs> yeah. I'd, I'd like to, I would like to say you're probably up there in, like, the Hall of Fame status, wouldn't you say? Oh, for sure, yeah, 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 for sure. I think there's, like, I wouldn't say it's too out of the, Realms to put you up there with like the Ric Flairs and shit, right? I'm not even being. I'm not even trying to be like. I'm trying. I'm being serious, dude. I, uh, I've had. I've, it's, it's been fun, and, and I'm, I'm. I'm lucky. Lucky to be alive to say it was. It was fun. Yeah. And now it's time for the next chapter of uh, my life. Yeah. Like well, white will always exist, but I have to focus on Patrick because Patrick has got kids. It'll have grandkids. It'll. You know what I'm saying? Like I've got to stick around. Yeah. Turn forty one this year, baby. Look at that. Yep. Making forty one look good this year. Yeah, man. Ooh, yeah, yeah, yes. So I had a question when you went when you went in, like, how how, like when you went in, did it take you a few days or a week or whatever to get acclimated as far as were you against it? No, 
Like you were, okay, so you were like accepting. No, you know, sometimes that's usually how it seems well, like. Well, if I, I felt like, you know, <clears throat> once I, um, once I get, you should tell me nine days in jail or whatever, and then off to rehab or whatever. It was like mm -hmm. the whole time, the whole nine days I had, I had to sit there and think just like, you know what, you need this. Like this, you, this is one thing you've never done. You try to quit drinking. You went to, oh, I'm going to just drink beer. You know, by the end of the night, you always end up hitting somebody's fifth or something. Yeah. Um, and, and, and they could come out of nowhere. You could be sitting there watching a movie and then a friend pop up with a pint of crown. Yeah. It just, it just, it just, yeah. it's always there. Especially and, when you're not trying to do it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, it, um, it, it, it didn't bother me because I, I already understood exactly what I was going into. Yeah. So I, I, I was open-minded the, 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 the whole fucking time. Yeah. I didn't miss a single fucking class. Because, I mean, what the fuck? You ain't got nothing else to do. Right. I mean, shit. I looked up. Shout out to Music Cares. Uh, Music Cares gave me a, a grant. I uh, paid my, all expenses paid through the Music Cares program out of Nashville. So shout out to them. Oh, that's dope. Um, yeah, that shit was going to cost me 30 bands. If not, I was like, shit. Yeah. We gotta sell the side by side. <laughs> the bride. <laughs> it's been a good bride, yeah. It, it was fun. <laughs> but now, um, they were awesome, man. Like, um, you know, I just, I went in very focused and was just like, look, if you don't do nothing else, don't don't let music cares money go to waste. You know, learn something. Like, yeah. Get in here and study, write notes down. Like, don't act like you went in a fucking grade eight, or a, a, a grade eight student before you started smoking weed and rapping and shit. Mm hmm Shit, I could have been valedictorian if I'd have just went to class. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, yeah. but it pays off like because I at the, the age I'm at, I needed that clarity right now. Mm -hmm. I will be 41 in October of this year, 2023. Yeah. And this is this is like a halfway point where you start. I could start this shit completely over again and be one years old all over again. Well, yeah. not mentally and physically. Right. Yeah. Obviously, yeah. I see what you're saying. Yeah. The, my body, my, mm -hmm. my, my organs, and my, the way I operate. There's so much goddamn fucking cheese and fruits and uh, like all kinds of shit in there, dude. There's the yogurts and man, Nicole and been whipping it up. She got her fucking little barista shit sitting up over there. I don't know. If she's got a lot. She's got a lot going on. But um, I'm excited about this Justin Time versus Lloyd album. It's mm -hmm. jamming. I think it's fucking hard as fuck. Yeah. And y'all know when I say I think it's hard as fuck. I've had albums where I looked y'all dead in your faces and said, man, y'all gonna like this a lot. But when I say this bitch is hard as a motherfucker, yeah. it's hard. That's no, it is for sure. I can vouch for it. And um, yeah. I can't wait for y'all to get it. No matter what motherfucking Justin Time says, it comes out on October 6th, okay? <laughs> oh, fuck that, it's my birthday. Oh, it's a fucking Wednesday this year. God damn it, nothing ever works out. Psych. We're still dropping it on Wednesday. Yeah. I'll, I'll leak it. I won't tell you. So, when you, you said you're 57 days, like when we were filming this, um, and that's the most sober you've been in like, what, 20 years, you'd say? God damn. As far as, uh, from, from alcohol at least, like, like, I was just trying, I was going to ask, like, what does it feel like, because if you're used to just being able to drink and just doing that just kind of when you want, what's it, was it, was it like a culture shock, like, to kick it like that, where you was just like, I, because you're so used to, like you was talking about when you woke up after the show, and yeah. your instinct was to like go. Yeah. Um, no, it, mostly because um, when I got the ankle monitor put on me the first time, mm -hmm. um, I quit for like thirty, like forty days. Yeah, because that that last interview we did, I think it just happened. Yeah, because I was yeah. drinking shots of tea. Remember? Yep. Yep. Um, well, in between this interview and that interview. I made a few mistakes and yeah. just got fucking filthy drunk. Gangsta boo died. I got drunk as shit. Yeah. Um, and Nicole's sister passed away. And we got drunk as shit. It was just, but but I and them classes help you realize like you're getting drunk for the wrong reasons. Like the, you know, like you're yeah. you're using it as a fucking like a weapon to harm yourself basically. And when like when, when it's when shit gets bro broken down like that to me, like don't get it twisted. White Lightning's still hitting the shelves. I'm mm -hmm. just done drinking. Yeah. I've got money to make. Yeah. But 
Yeah, I don't know. It just kind of hit me, man. After you do something for so long to your body, like, you know, it's, it's going to catch up, and I'd rather fix that shit now. Well, that's dope that you did, man, because that, that, that says a lot about it, because it would be easy. You know, a, a lot of people, especially when it's, like, rehab stuff, like, I'm just, and there may have been people in there that you were in there with that were, like, trying to fight against that stuff. I would, you know what I mean? That, that wasn't as welcoming to it like you were, you know what I mean? Oh, for sure. Some people yeah. were, had to be drug in there. Yeah. You know, some people against, were, yeah. Which, you know, I mean, I mean, of course, I don't know their names, but I saw people fucking getting drug out of ambulances, like, I don't want to go in there. Yep. And then two weeks later, they look amazing, and they're going to eat lunch and shit, and mm -hmm. walking around in the sunshine, and you're like, look at that shit. It's just like a fucking miracle. Yeah. Yeah, and it, like you said, man, it didn't, it didn't help. And everybody knows I ain't no religious motherfucker, but I found, right. I, I, I know my higher power guided me through that shit. My yeah. higher power's my dad. We all know that. Yeah. Yeah, that goes back to the first interview we shot when you was talking about him um, giving you the money for your first album. Yeah. Back then. Yeah. And like how he, he he saw something in you back then, like, and took a gamble on you, which ended up, you know, was kind of what your winning. Springboard was. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it was your springboard, bro. And it's just dope that that's that's how that that kind of started out for you, and then even now, like, it, that that helps you get through. Probably, I would, I would assume it's probably one of the tougher times you've had to go through. Uh, I mean, yeah, for sure. As yeah, far as all yeah. that goes, you know, yeah. like realizing that. And it, uh, it, it really wasn't, though. It wasn't? What are you talking about, in rehab? Just in, yeah, just in general. Yeah. Dude, in rehab, it was one of those, like, when I walked in and the first person noticed me, I, I cracked a joke and was like, knew I'd be here sooner or later. Yeah. And, like, I had to think about the way I said that, and I was like, damn, you knew it. You So I was exactly where I was supposed to be. Yeah. You know, like, I, I'm a strong believer that you are where you're supposed to be, when you're supposed to be there, because if you're not, why would you be there? Yeah. No, that's true. When you break it down like that, I mean, that's just, facts. that's life. Yep. And I felt like that was where I was supposed to learn a little bit about myself, learn mm -hmm. about my, uh, my my fucking alcohol addiction, because it's, it's, an, it's an addiction, goddammit. Yeah. But like my like I said, mine was the, uh, you know, start in the afternoon, drink at night, and then kill the bottle and go get another bottle. I wasn't a morning drinker. I would drink until the mornings. Yeah. You know, that was the difference. Oh, I don't drink all day. No, motherfucker, you just woke up. You just went to bed three hours ago. Yeah. But I also did it for my kids and my wife and, you know, just a better me, you know, better me is, if I can better myself, I'll be better to them a hundred, tenfold or a hundredfold, you know? Yeah. And, and it was probably like you were saying too, you were just kind of, you'd been doing it for such an extended period of time that you were just probably like, man, this is, this is. It was one of those, like, it was yeah. one of those, like, you remember back in the day, you were like, dude, I wonder how, how I would get off of Ten months, or yeah. I wonder how how fucking drunk we can get it when we drink the whole twelve pack or the whole fifth, or you know, back when we were learning. Yeah, yeah. Now I'm like, I wonder how sober I could fucking get. Yeah, yeah. I wonder just because they say that you know it, it says after you quit drinking alcohol for over six months, your brain starts to rewire itself. Oh man. And I I, I mean I could definitely say that man. I think, and you know. motherfuckers don't want to see me rewired. Oh boy, you talking about. Lil White 6.0. Yeah. Well, I like it. It might be the name of the next album. 6.0, hell yeah. But yeah, like it's, it's, and I'm already feeling it. Like, you know, like shit. I just, yesterday I woke up and I just got out, walked outside. And, you know, two days ago, I just got out there and cut the grass. Mm -hmm. <laughs> just it's like eight o'clock in the morning. I was like, oh yeah, this is what people do. Like, yeah. When they're not fucking hung over and, you know what I'm saying? Like, I had, I had to really see that shit for myself and, you know, if I could help one person out there, go for it, man. Just go for it. Quit drinking. Yeah. What are they doing? Oh, they're yeah, in the man. studio yeah, recording. Yeah, yeah. It sounds like Justin is in there, like, beating the shit out of saying that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're, we're like, and like you said, man, like, you, you had a, you had a lot of stuff that was starting to hit, too, like, with Boo passing, like, R.I.P. Gangsta Boo, man. That was yeah. awful. And I know that you and her were super close, and... That doesn't, you know, it's like it's like they come in waves, you know. Oh yeah. Uh, the little, the little girl that hung herself in TSU College mm -hmm. was nineteen. You hear about her? In uh -huh. TSU, a little black, man, little black girl. Uh -huh. That was my goddaughter. Oh man, I didn't even hear about that. Yeah. Rest in peace, Anaya. It yeah. was uh, it's actually Ace from Thug Therapy's daughter. 
Oh, gotcha. Okay. Yeah. So, shout out to my brother. I love you, brother. Which she will be missed. Yeah, man. And, it, and that was what I'm saying. They were coming back to back to back. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and I was first, actually, I think. So it was just like, doom, doom, doom. But that'll do it, though. That'll take you to alcohol. And, man, I had to get to the point where I just realized, like, I, yeah. that when, when, when you drink and you drink to numb a pain, you'll never truly numb that pain. That's why you drink so much and you yeah. keep drinking and keep Because you just don't want to feel. You don't yeah. want to feel. Man, like I said, I, y'all thought I was, if anybody's watching this follows me on Instagram and y'all think that I was joking about the parfait thing the other night, swear to God, I've been an alcoholic since parfaits uh, became a thing, okay? Yeah. Parfaits were created in our uh, generation. I'm pretty sure of that. It seems they got popular at least. Well, like, yeah, they sure. might have been over in like like yeah. Italy or something yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah. But like yeah. we're talking about in fucking stupid America we live in that don't realize that parfaits are the shit. <laughs> like, parfaits are the shit. Bro, I, I took a bite of that motherfucker and I looked at Nicole was like she was like I, Nicole was like eat some eat some healthy because apparently uh, you know uh, uh, this look my daddy told me this shit and I'm gonna knock on some wood because I have to for this one. My diet. So before my dad passed away, we he already had one heart attack. I'm getting off subject, but it's just, no, it's, it's, fine. it's yeah. funny though. Um, yeah. Um, <laughs> so my dad had already had one heart attack. When he had the second one, we knew that it was it was bad. Like it was probably going, he wasn't gonna last long because we was in the hospital with him and shit. And uh, and I straight up asked him, I was like, "Dude, is there anything I can do? Whatever, blah blah blah." And he's like, "No, nah, whatever." And I was like, "Well," he's like, "Is there anything you want from me?" I was like, "I want your rib recipe." I gotta have your dry rub recipe. Mm-hmm. That shit won Memphis and May a couple of years. Number two, I want shotguns and is there anything else you need? He was like, I was like, dude, you, you're gonna pull through, bro. You're gonna be all right. He was just like, look, man. And they had already made him quit smoking cigarettes, quit drinking. I said he could have one beer a week. And he, I wanna say he quit smoking weed toward the end. And uh, that motherfucker told me, he said, I was like, what the fuck you think went wrong? You, you got this, you got another day. And he said, look, son, when you wash all the mud off the truck, mm-hmm. it's going to fall apart. And it took me like days. And he passed away the next morning. Mm-hmm. And uh, the last thing he told me that night was he was proud of me. That was the last word he told me. I was like, all right, well, I'll talk to you tomorrow. I'll see you tomorrow when I come around lunch. And he died like 30 minutes before lunch time, before I got there. And, uh, but um, he meant sometimes... The mud is the only thing holding the truck together. Yep. And you and the mud is all the dirt you've done in your life. Yep. You know what I'm saying? So when you wash that truck and all that dirt that you done did in your life, wash it off, that motherfucker might, the truck might do, 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 just fall apart. Yep. Because that mud's done kept it tight. The yep. mud is just got encasing. Yep. The struggles were what encased that fucking truck into one thing, like, and I believe that, dude, because, I mean, we live, I, mean, I live on the outskirts of Memphis, and I done seen some shit boxes on the road. Yeah. And I think I've seen somebody pedaling it with their feet. But. <laughs> Try uh, Flintstones. Well, I'm dead serious. This is Memphis. Though. No, I, I believe it, bro. Uh, yeah, it, was just, it was just the way you well, said it. I spiral off. What was we talking about, though? No, you was, we were was just talking about just you being sober and everything. and you, you know, Like, talking about the, the year. The, the rough year that, you know, with, with Gangsta Boo passing and your goddaughter passing. and Yeah, it was, you know, uh, it was, yeah, it was just a lot of shit, man. But, and, I mean, not only that, like, you know, you know, I, I did wreck it side by side, you know. Oh, did you? I mean, I mean, I, I, I ran over a mailbox. Oh, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought you were talking about... <laughs> right, right, yeah, yeah. No, no, that one, that's, that's the truth. I, they yeah. know I ran over it. I was yeah, allegedly <laughs> drunk. <laughs> that was, that was, was like the day after... that. We came up here the day after all that happened. Yeah, the, day, the very next day, yeah. Because yeah. um, you took me for a ride. Remember, we went, we went to, yep. we went back to the sidecar in that yeah, in the side by side. Um, but yeah, um, um, there's going to be a lot of people. I'm going to go and address the elephant in the room. Um, there's going to be a lot of people that watch this video and be like, "Oh, little white went to uh, to uh, rehab because of that." The fuck is the dog doing? Lil White went to rehab uh, because uh, uh, he went viral for being a drunk piece of shit alcoholic. Let me explain something to all you motherfuckers. I was wanting to talk to you about that, but I didn't know if you wanted to talk oh, about no, it. Oh, no, we'll get right into it. Okay. Um, my rehab situation was going to happen regardless of that night ever happening. I violated my ankle monitor 
many times before that night happened. I knew my jail time and all that shit was coming. You knew it was coming. Yeah. yeah, I knew that was coming. Yeah. Uh, so for anybody that gets this thought process in their heads, like, oh, what, this shit happened to White, and you got, they checked him into rehab. No. Uh, some whole different shit happened a year ago in Memphis. Judge got on my ass for violating my monitor, mm -hmm. sent me to jail and to rehab. It just so happens that it all falls around this thing, and I'm really glad it did because what it showed me is that I do owe the fans an apology for the ending of that show, and I will make it up. And what I will not apologize is calling that one bitch a fucking cunt. Mm -hmm. I'll never apologize to that fucking cunt. So if that was your response you were looking for, dear, you just got it. Yeah. Other than that, dude, I went to rehab and it helped me more than anything. I'm happy with it. <laughs> like, yeah. I'm fucking happy with it. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah there will be a Crossville show makeup, and uh, that chick's the driver's side says no Karen's out front. Yeah. Well, and two, I, one, thing, one thing I wanted, to, I wanted to, to speak on with that is, obviously, I saw the clip, and, of course, the clip doesn't look good, but... The clip also didn't there's show, not context didn't to that show clip. the context. Yes. Yeah, I mean, so you're seeing what what they up. Yeah, right. So I mean, there was a moment of silence for Gangsta Blue, and that one of them chicks said "fucking bitch" or "bitch" or she said something. Yeah, yeah. No, but I, that part wasn't included, that wasn't included in the video. It, yeah, they it never, just showed that. So they, yeah. they never show why the celebrity acts a fool. They only show the celebrity acting a fool. Yeah, yeah. yeah. ain't that right, just in time? I'm not no longer here. <laughs> <laughs> but now, like, I ain't tripping about this shit. What, what actually helped is, like, that shit, that shit went viral, and then, like, the very next day, me and Wild Bill dropped our, our EP, EP, and that bitch hit 100,000 streams in 24 hours on Spotify, like that. Like, so, yeah. pre appreciate that there. Yeah. But next time, you're still not invited into one of the shows. We got about 10 people that know what you look like, so. Joke's on you, lady. Remember how you said, I want to go home? You can stay there now. Yeah. Well, like I said, man, like all that stuff. Everything happens for a reason. Yeah, man. And there's, there's context to everything. And, and nine times out of ten, when, when you see something like that happen, you don't know the whole story, so you don't oh, yeah. know. You just know whatever you're seeing. When them folks started talking shit about Gangsta Boo during her moment of silence, I lost it. Yeah. And was I drunk? Yes. But should I, did I have all rights to lose it? Mm, I probably I could have handled it better. Yeah, but you, yeah. I was I was in a, a, a what do you say in, in a breed a breed inebri 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 inebriated. This yeah. is, I couldn't get that word out for shit. Yeah. But no, I mean I I, I could have handled it differently. But um, I'm not I'm not taking back what I did. Yeah. I had to think about who the fuck I am and what I stand for and what the fuck I believe in. And ain't nobody gonna talk about nobody that I love ever. Like, period. Not while I'm around, goddammit. You'll get pointed out, you'll get escorted, you'll get roasted, something's gonna happen. Yeah. Now, and, and, and not only that, these people have been, uh, the, the people that was, I want to say the people that was in that, some of that situation have been fans for a long time. So they should have already known how I was gonna get down. They should have already known how I was gonna get down. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. City of Crossville, I'll be back for a makeup show. Yeah, yeah. Well, dude. Sober. Right. Well, and the thing is too, it's just, I'm just glad that you're able, that, that that worked itself out and like with, with the rehab and like everything and you're in a, in a better space now because oh, yeah. we've been boys for years, man. And I, I, I love you dog. But when I see, I know, cause I know, I know you. So I know right. when, you're, when you're drinking, I know that you're hurting and I know that's a lot. Not every time that's why you're drinking, right. but I get it. So I, I'm glad to see that that was something you were able to. Yeah. Hit head on, bro, and run that shit over, dog. You know. Yeah, I just got a, uh, I just got a new way I will deal with, you know, with death in my life. You know, I mean, the more, I, and I'm a very smart person. Death is no bullshit. Uh, one hundred percent part of life. Death is one hundred percent part of life. Yeah. And you know, just gotta, gotta accept it. Yeah. And I've accepted it. Yeah, man. Well, I'm looking forward to you and Justin's project, man. Man, me too. I'm um, so excited. The interview with you and him will be dropping. It'll drop after this. But 
closer to the time y'all dropping y'all's album. But I got my grandpa on that motherfucker. Yeah, dude, it's it's really dope music, and I'm just glad to see you back doing doing you, man, and and, and doing it in a way that you necessarily may hadn't been able to do it. You know, so who's to say who knows what the future holds for you when you don't have that. Silver like, white, baby. Silver white. Y'all better watch out for silver white. Yeah, dude. Y'all don't want to play with this guy. This guy's been a... Uh, I've had this guy hidden in a in a cavern for like the last 24 years. And these therapists and counselors are just... See, I told you, I woke, up, I woke the monster up. That's him. He's, he's co-signing it, dude. I'm, I'm telling you, I got me in my little, my little demon monster. I love him, dude. Hef's the shit, dude. I'm, yeah. Go get him, Hef. Tell yeah, him what the fuck's up. Go get him. Go get him. Go get him. But yeah, I'm uh, I'm ready to see what this new music's gonna bring. I I really am. Yeah, man. Well, I'm looking forward to it, and I appreciate you as always, dog. Um, appreciate you, I, brother. I look, uh, I look forward to everything, man. And again, Chatterham's TV, Lil White.